the narrative for aging people or for elders, the elder segment of our population, particularly in the church. Uh, you know, our, our goal is to make a difference for Christ throughout our aging years and encourage more and more people to do that, to impact the world, which is, I mean, uh, which is around us. We're running out of years, you might say. So we got a limited time to uh, do what God wants us to do. So that's where we're at. Um, you know the verse? Isn't there? Uh, okay, well, this is George, uh, Robert Browning. I love this, George. This is uh, this a Baylor guy. He's Well, he's a Baylor guy because he's they have a, a Browning library at Waco. Okay. He lived in England and uh, Florence. Well, okay with me the best is yet to be the last of life for which the first was made I, I just love this God planned an entire life youth shows but half so turn to keep on chip uh, you know, it's a key verse God saved us and he made us his workmanship and he gave us works to do so what are we doing in our elder years what are we doing in this elder season of life? There's six things that we work on. All this, yeah. Well, why did he create the aging years? Uh, George, you're a counselor. How many aging people do you incur, uh, do you see, or what kind of people do you see? I see a lot of older people, actually. Uh, probably uh, half of my work is with people uh, uh, probably uh, 60 years old, older, older, I would say. Really? Yeah. Lots of comorbidity with health problems and things like that. But uh, I've, I, and I've uh, done some work in nursing homes. So uh, I've, I've, I, if I have a specialty, that's what it is, actually. So. Well, I'll be. Yeah. Yeah. We hadn't talked about that. Yeah. Benita, you're doing the same thing, aren't you? A lot of work with older people? Yes. I just started that um, in the last three, four months. And what we do is, is once a month have, have a group. And I'm not seeing, like you, George, I'm not seeing a lot of older people as count for counseling. Um, I'm hoping that by me, by having, this, having these groups, that people will start feeling comfortable coming in. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's great because a lot of older people are really isolated. And so that's a great opportunity for them to interact. Yeah. Uh, aging isolates uh, the, the elder seniors. So questions, you know, why did God create these, elder, uh, these aging years? We're living them. What's his purpose? Do we have a mission? What does that verse, Ephesians 2.10, mean now? And where in our culture or even in our churches are those questions being addressed? I don't think the church takes sufficient time to address them. So that's what we're after in our ministry. So there are six areas. Uh, we reviewed these last week. Uh, growing. I want to talk about growth today. And uh, let's just roll in. So I go to Psalm 139. Your eyes have seen my unformed, and by that, all my thinking is, I would say, is biblical. I mean, you you want to you want to anchor your life in the scriptures. The days that were ordained for me, so God ordains these aging years, and you might say, what's His meaning and what's His purpose about it? So, you know, as we're we we work with older people or anybody around us, our goal is to learn from him about what we ought to be doing. You know, so I'll pursue this idea of learning and growing. You know, this is one of my favorite verses. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn. So whether, George, you're dealing with older people, Benita, you're dealing with older people, or let's say you're dealing with your grandkids. You know, we're all to be learning of Jesus, so we're always growing. And isn't, isn't that what the word disciple means? The word itself means learner. To be a disciple means you're learning something from somebody else. If you're a disciple of, say, whoever, 
you know, you're, you're following that person. You're paying attention to them. You're learning from them. Uh, my key verse, which I worked at last week, is in Philippians 3. It's our next slide. You know, Paul at age, let's say he was 63 or thereabouts. He was continuing to press on. He was continuing to reach ahead. Hmm. Continuing to press. So Paul is learning about what God wants him to be and do in this season of life, just as much as he did anywhere. You know, uh, I, I would say every season of life is a learning season. So Paul is leaning into these elder years, wanting to press and learn what God has for him. So I think that should be our ambition. Uh, I think of 2 Corinthians 4.16. Therefore, we do not lose. Uh, well, let me back up. Yeah, therefore, we do not lose heart. But though our outer man is decaying, you know, here's the aging process. It's taking a toll in our lives in some way, right? You know, we're aging. We're being isolated. We have challenges that we didn't have. But what's happening on the inside? You're being renewed day by day as you process life from God's standpoint. Next slide. You're always learning. Uh, Peter says this, 2 Peter 1 8, he gives a list of all kinds of qualities. And he says, if these qualities are yours and are what? What's the word? Increasing, mm -hmm. <laughs> developing, growing, expanding. You know, take perseverance. Does your, your perseverance ought to increase as we age and run into issues? And I love Peter's last verse, 2 Peter 3 18, but grow. So here Peter is in his mid 60s, say, not long before his execution. And he's thinking about growing. So here we are, George, we're aging. And Vanita, we're, and we want to keep growing in our spiritual lives, don't we? We want to maximize what God wants to do in us. Now, think about it in terms of your Christian character. Uh, I like to ask people, and I ask myself, am I everything that God wants me to be in being Jesus? <laughs> we have a way to grow, don't we? <laughs> in terms of being like Jesus. For those who mm -hmm. knew he predestined to be conformed. So the aging years give an opportunity like we've never had before to be more conformed to the image of Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit is forming Jesus in our lives. So how do our challenges in our aging years grow our conformity uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ? You see the same thing in Romans 8, 29. He predestined for us to become conformed to the image of his son. So he's working in our lives every day. So you think about that, and there are changes that are happening. That's why Moses prayed in Psalm 90. Teach us, help me to learn the value of my days, that I may present to you a heart of wisdom. There is a skill in aging that should grow our sense of wisdom and understanding about who God is and what he wants us to be. And then Moses says, confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm it. A couple other little verses. Uh, the next one is in Psalm 92. I love this. The middle lines there. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still yield fruit when? <laughs> in old age. In old age. Mm. You, you know, uh, my kids, uh, I don't know if I told you this last week, my kids are in the wine business in California. And, you know, aging vines typically make the best wine. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm. So they still produce, and you know, you think of all the fruit you grow in your old age, your 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 depth of understanding, your depth of, of life, your breath, your experiences, your sense of history. You know, why shouldn't these years bear the best fruit of our lives, you might say? Uh, makes all the difference in the world. Next slide. You know, I think this is what, why Paul mentioned this. He saw his life happening here. 
I've kept the faith in the future. He is he, he, he continues to grow towards tomorrow. At this stage in your last months, maybe your last weeks, your last days, you still can't help but think and pray and lean into tomorrow because the best is yet to come, right? So reflect with me for a minute here. The next slide. Um, these scriptures and the theme of growth seem to go against the drift of our culture. Mm. To retire, and, and this mm -hmm. is the meaning of the word retirement, it means to stop engaging. Mm. Typically used in a military setting where the military commander would retire his troops, realizing that the enemy has, is going to outgun him. You know, so he withdraws or retires the troops. Now you think about that. Where else do we use the word retire today? Think of some other activities, professions. Yeah. Well, I mean, and athlete, when he retires, what do they do yeah. with his jersey? <laughs> He's Thank done. You. They hang it in the rafters. You know, you, you retire yeah. airplanes to the desert because they don't sure. work. Mm-hmm. Other things that where you think about retirement. I mean, mm. we you say stop we, working, you retire. Yeah, we retire to bed, so we go to yeah. sleep and, and, and shut everything off. Yes. Wow. You you get a batter out, you retire the batter in baseball. You mm. decide when you get them all out. Mm. Whole cultural use of the word retirement is uh, you would say it's not a good deal. So we jump to Romans 12, uh, the next verse here. Contrary, we grow in Christ every day. We're continually ambitious to keep serving him. You know, that's what I think Paul means. Do not be conformed to this world and how they understand retirement. But be renewed in your mind so that you may prove for yourself in your 70s, in your 80s, in your 90s, in your 60s, whatever we are, Prove what the will of God is, that which is perfect and acceptable in him. So it makes me think of uh, Browning again. The best is yet to be. Why? Because we're growing into all God has for us more and more. Make sense? Makes sense. I have a bunch of quotes here. Uh, I think I have six of them. It's interesting. Anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. By Henry Ford, you know. The future belongs to the learning, not to the learned. I love that line by Mary Louise Rowan. Eric Hoffer, in times of change, learners inherit the earth. While the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. Yeah, you know, there's something about continuing to stay up. George, if, if we don't stay up, we'll lose our grandkids. Mm -hmm. Because they have a whole different world that when mm -hmm. you know, learn their world. Mm -hmm. Right? Wow. Lewis Berry Chafer, the president of the seminary, said, when you stop studying, you're dead. <laughs> That's what he said to, you know, students in seminary. You know, you got to stay on the learning curve. Howard Hendrick said, when your memories are more exciting than your dreams, you've begun to die. Go mm -hmm. get your music world. You never get old until your regrets take the place of your dreams. That's great. You know, and that's my verse in Acts 2.17. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. So I want to just say change is an opportunity to grow. So as you sit with these older folks, George or Benita or any of us in our church, you know, one of the questions you ask yourself in the back of your mind, how are you growing? And these problems that we encounter, whether they're physical, emotional, spiritual, they're all opportunities for growth. All change is an opportunity to grow. Mm. Like the phrase, school is always open, no matter how old you are. Make sense? For sure. I love these. Uh, I got two quotes here, or one quote, two slides from Howard Hendricks. 
I love this in light of this background. Old age is as important and meaningful part of God's perfect will as you. He's interested in both the waxing and waning of life, just as potential is locked up in young people and often never develop. So the full possibilities of old age often remain dormant and die with the person. Wow. It's just tragic. Old age, mm. work of God will be greatly enriched when mm. it is given to releasing and utilizing this hidden resource. And I would say in a nutshell, that's the mission that I feel God has called me and finishing well to address. Older people represent the greatest potential resource and labor pool within our churches, though consistently ignored. I, I don't know. Why is that? You know, just stop for a second. I heard Prof give this lecture series. All of his students always affectionately referred to him as Prof. He gave this lecture series in 99 when he was in his late 70s as a lecture series to the community of Dallas Seminary. It is hard. I mean, growth is hard, is it not? It can be hard. Sometimes it's easy. I think of those little people, uh, George, that grow up in our life. I mean, whether we think back in our own kids as they grew up, I, I love to watch these little people learn to walk. I mean, they're changing, and they stumble on and fall all over the place when they learn to take those first steps. But they grow up. And what parent or grandparent doesn't want their kids to grow? So, But they're hard things. And I like these verses here. Although, G, referring to Jesus, Hebrews 5, 8, although he was a son, he learned obedience through the things which he what? Suffered. I want to say there's no growth without a challenge, and there's no challenge without change. As we get older, many resist change. Forgetting without the challenge of change, we're in danger of deteriorating physically, mentally, and spiritually. I love that quote. I mean, that's, that's really what life is about, is it not? Uh, you know, all of life is changing. You know, we're, we're <laughs> I want to say we're deluded into thinking we can keep everything permanent just the way it is. And maybe we think we can for a year or a year or two, but then everything changes. Our kids change, we change, life changes, weather changes, COVID changes, the world changes. Uh, I love this last line. This is from, uh, well, embrace the difficult circumstances you find yourself in, even when you feel they will overwhelm you. Allow God to mold you through the events he allows to enter your life. This will make you flexible towards the will of God. The events of life are like a furnace for the heart. All your impurities are melted and your own ways are lost. The intrusions that God sends will no doubt upset your plans and oppose all that you want, but they will chase you towards God. Mm. Is that not amazing? The mm. mm. little mm -hmm. that uh, Francis Fenelon wrote. So, you know, I, I think one of the things you, you think about in life is what am I learning and how am I growing in these years? How does God want me to grow? How does he want aging people to grow? With all that I've had in light of how I'm growing now, and in light of who I am, what do I believe is my highest and best contribution in advancing the cause of Christ on the earth? May I? How, how one of the things that you're going on, as, as I'm thinking about these questions, what am I learning and how I'm growing in these years, I'm often, I'm wondering, like, are we asking ourselves these questions? You know, uh, because it sounds like somewhere along the line, we just stop. <laughs> and I don't, I don't hear anyone challenging, challenging us in these questions and, and challenging us that there is life, there is purpose in this season of our lives. It's a great insight. You know, I like to ask the question, why do adults stop learning? Why do they? Yep. Great well, question. George, you're a counselor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why? 
I, I mean, I think part of it is just cultural. I mean, I think uh, uh, we're, we're just sort of acculturated to, uh, uh, you know, learn during the uh, years until 25 or something like that. I mean, in, a, in at least in a, a real structured way. And then we, we produce from then until 65. And then I think we just sort of think we're supposed to take off. Uh, I mean, obviously it's not a useful thing and all, but I, I do think it's a, it's easy to just sort of uh, put things into glide. I think when you get older and, uh, mm. and I, and I think that's sort of expected of us, uh, even in the church, I think uh, uh, the older people are just expected to, you know, we, we were the ones that were very active and we taught youth and we, taught Sunday school and we were there and we were in leadership. And then when you uh, get to retirement age, I think it's almost expected that you uh, sort of go out to pasture a little bit. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but that's what I think in our culture. Mm. Is true. I think part of it is uh, interactively, give me some feedback. Our, our whole culture is or oriented to productivity. If you don't make something of your life, you're a failure. Hmm. so you have to learn whether it's a new trade coming out of high school i mean all, all of schooling is about learning i mean whether you're a kindergartner or whether you're a senior in high school you go on to college it's about learning in order to do something with your hands so you keep going this in incline this upward incline all your life and at a certain point and by the way, you keep changing and all of that because if you're going to be good at whatever you do, whether it's a counselor or a handyman or a craftsman or whatever, you know, you got to keep developing a skill and refine it again and again. But then at a certain point, you stop because you don't produce anymore. And of course, that's that's what I think retirement is. It's a stopping point. And because it's you, you're not producing anything with your life anymore, in a sense, you're finished. The main I think that's right. I, I, I live on a cul-de-sac. And uh, to get to our house, we have to come in and make a, a left turn to go down into the cul-de-sac. But there was a, he was, he's, they're, they're gone now. But for, for years, there's a, old retired pediatrician, very well-known pediatrician here in Lubbock uh, uh, that uh, lived in a house that you could see when you were turning into the cul-de-sac where I live. And every night after supper, he was in his office. You could see through the window, you see the office. And it was this, in the library, it was just, it was just a ceiling to floor books. And, and, and anytime you drove in at night, he was in there reading, you know, uh -huh. and, and and even when he was 90 years old, he was still doing that. And I always thought, man, that's how I want to be. You know, I want to still be learning and, and yeah. interesting like that, you know. Hmm. So as we age, I mean, these questions here, in what direction is God leading me to invest my time, talent, and treasure? What, what opportunities do I have? Am I increasing my self-awareness and what God wants to do through me? But again, it's set against the cultural backdrop. I'm not as interested in these questions in my 70s anymore. I'm not as interested in my 80s unless, as you said, unless somebody's challenging me and getting in my face and say, Hi, Becker, what are you doing with your life? Make sense? Mm -hmm. So, you know, here, this is a personal story here. I had to, you know, when I stepped out of the pastorate seven years ago, uh, I, I came up with a new mission. So here's what I wrote. I'm trusting God to use my gifts of encouragement and teaching. They're, they're my best. They're, they're my, I think, the gifts the Spirit has, has given me. And what am I doing with them? I want to equip and motivate retiring boomers and those older in the prime of their life to deepen their love for Jesus, and to use the talents and gifts God has given them to make their best contributions throughout their remaining years. Mm. So I'm not interested in backing off at all, but I'm not pastoring a church, so my mission's a little bit different. 
I still have my mission and my marriage and my family and my grandkids, but in terms of who I am and what God's doing in my life, this, in a sense, is my new mission field, you might say. I want to keep growing and developing it. And so we're growing this ministry. We're working on it. So you remember the chart. I think I had this chart last year. <laughs> you know, you see what your physical life does. You just, <laughs> or just the need we just go down. <laughs> It, it, what's, what's crazy to me, that's the way God designed it, but what's the purpose in it? You have to reach for something beyond what we are physically. Mm -hmm. Because our physical, I mean, this is crazy, our physical limitations, I mean, you look at people who come back from wars and they lose limbs. You know, mm -hmm. the guy in the Hope Center here, Nick Vukovic, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He he has no legs or arms. You know, he has a speaking ministry around the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he has this little wheelchair and he just sits on it. I mean, he can't do anything. When I first met him here a while back, he said, how will you give me a hug? Because I can't hug you back. So mm -hmm. I reached my arms around him. I've never hugged a limbless person before. Mm -hmm. It was awesome, uh, but you know he continues to excel in his limitations. I mean, you watch a video of people who rehab themselves. You know, whether it's a neck injury, a spinal injury, losing a, limb. you know, people can learn to walk. They do things all over again for the very first time. So you know, I'm a lifelong learner. Why do we stop learning? You know, I have, I'm sorry to interrupt, but another thing is that I don't know about in your culture, but sometimes in my culture is, is why are you, why are you continuing to do that? Why are you continuing? You know, I don't know how many people have said, Benita, why don't you retire? Why don't you stop? Why are you constantly learning or trying to do something new? So if you're constantly hearing those types of, of voices, you tend, to, you tend to think, is there something wrong with me? Is there something that maybe, am I out of step with the rest of the world? You know, or is this really how God created me to be, is to be this lifelong learner? You see, so sometimes we, we don't, get to this place is because of the voices that we hear. Uh, you're right. Chip, go to the comparison slide, the growth and the barriers. Mm. Oh, keep going. There, this one. So that's one of the barriers, Vanita. You know, mm -hmm. around us all the time who are either saying you should take a break you know, mm -hmm. say, what would have they thought of St. Paul? Paul, mm -hmm. you, you know, you're, you're fixing to die. Why don't you take it easy? Why don't you go to the beach for the next three years? Or to Peter, who said, let's grow and great. I, I've done enough. I don't need to do anymore. I mean, you can't imagine that, can you? But yet your voices from your culture and even from your peers right around you. Mm -hmm. Your kids may say, you know, whatever. Take mm -hmm. a bed. I mean, not that I'm frantically running around or whatever. Uh, I don't want to do that, but I do have, you know, God's not finished with us. And mm. He's on the left side. I want to press on. I want to develop some new skills. I mean, even as ministry develops, I, I mean, I'm <laughs> sometimes I hear voices say, how you've done this in a church all your life. To break. You know, you have to do this again. Well, yeah, you know, but the spirit won't let me back off. Mm -hmm. And it's not just me. I mean, I'm right. a person who wants to press the the limits, but you know, it's it's who I am. It's what God made us to be, mm -hmm. forming Christ in us and letting Him speak through our lives to the around us. Right. Mm -hmm. So then we have to also then be aware then that that. As we go into this growth in the barriers, that we have to be aware that, and, and George, you know this, that that people's self-talk can stop them in their tracks from doing and from being who God yeah. created them to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and that leads into next week's essential, the power of relationships. 
And why does God give us friends? Does he give mm. us to be content with each other? You know, I think of Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, mm. and sharpens the countenance of his friend. You know, you mm. watch a football game on TV, or you watch it there in Red, Red Raider land, George. Yeah. How many coaches are on the sidelines with a team? I mean, they have a coach for everything under the sun. And, mm. and it's all to help the players continue wow. to develop. You know, they do it in the pros. I mean, I watch the Mavericks play. I'm a basketball nut. Uh, you, you know, they got 13 coaches sitting there along with 13 players. Mm. I mean, but they're all focused on helping people to develop. Go back to the COVID screen, Chip. There. Uh, lean in and look at that one. You know, we just passed the two-year anniversary when COVID uh, hit the United States. So this slide was a picture of a door hanger in North Dallas, in a North Dallas community. This community was struggling with what they do about COVID. And I love these options. What do I want to be during COVID-19? Well, the first zone is the fear. I'm just I'm going to let myself down. I'm afraid. I don't want to get it. The next zone is a learning zone. Well, we want to learn everything we can about it so we can react accordingly. The next zone is a growth zone. Well, how am I going to grow into my world if COVID is going to dominate? What, what kind of person do I need to become? I just jumped off the screen. I actually saw this on a door at somebody's house, and I snapped a picture of it because it illustrated perfectly, you know, what we're trying to, to say in terms of what God wants us to be. He wants us to grow. and then, wow doesn't want us to grow, right? Mm. What's the devil's ambition for us? He wants to mm. want, destroy us. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's like a roaring lion seeking, prowls about, seeking those he may devour. So, you know, it's one of the barriers. Satan is going to do his level best to neutralize my impact for Christ, my impact to grow in Christ, my impact to help others. Uh, I think that's it. I mean, these, you know, I like to use the scriptural verses to set the biblical framework for it. And I hope you see that. Does it make sense? Yes. Sure. Uh, I mean, if you believe the Bible, I mean, you, you want to grow every day you're alive. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think when I work with uh, older people, I talk about, uh, especially people in a nursing home setting or something like that, that have a lot of times really a lot of physical problems, always try to talk about adjusting to your circumstances and accepting your circumstances. I think those are two different things. And, you know, and, and a lot of times people see acceptance of it as giving up. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, I mean, I think adjusting, mm -hmm. we should be doing that all the time. I think that's what you're talking about here with growth. Uh, you know, uh, circumstances are changed. Uh, I can't, uh, move as fast as I used to, and I can't keep four things going at the same time, like I might've done 15 years ago, but, uh, I, I still, it's important that I, still, like you said, be productive, maybe just in different ways. Um, and and uh, so, I mean, I think the people I see that do the best are the people who, uh, who uh, accept what the change, but then, then adjust and grow through it, if that makes sense, the way I kind of, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know. It, it makes all the sense mm -hmm. in the world. To, to, it's it's pathetic. I mean, to me, uh, the greatest example of just not accepting it was Willie Mays. Do you remember Willie Mays, the story of, of him? He just wouldn't quit. You know, he just kept playing basketball, uh, I mean, baseball, baseball, on and mm -hmm. on to the point where it was almost, it almost hurt to watch him play because he was just 
you know, he, he was not what he once was. I, I, I feel like that's an example of, of, of just not accepting those limitations. I, I think we have to be realistic. Mm -hmm. that, uh, but I mean, I, I do think on top of that, then now the, the, the field, the, the field has changed. Now, what am I going to do with that? And I think it is important that we, we stay productive and, and we, and we grow in different ways. That's a great like insight, that, George. George. Yeah, I do too. I like that. You know, you would say acceptance is really a way of change. Yeah, I mean, I think you have uh, acceptance leads to some change. Otherwise, and and I think we've all known people that that I think they just won't quit, you know, and they 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 can't move uh, into this this stage. They they you know I'm going to work till the day I drop dead or something like that. I mean, and I'm talking about in the extreme case. You know, I can think of a couple of people right now that I know that uh, all they know is their work. And, and I think it's sort of, oh, I think it's sort of sad to see that because I think um, moving into, in my way I conceptualize it is moving into these years, uh, I've got to look at how, how things are different in my physical and, and even, even cognitive situation. And now how can I be productive probably in a different way? And, um, yeah. you know, how can I make the most of the time uh, I've got left, you know, especially in, in a lot of the kingdom, you know, and it's just really not the same. Yeah, an example of old age I will always have. Uh, my mother died at age 96, and really her last year and a half, maybe two years, uh, she was almost bedridden. She had to have a hoist to get her up so she could bathe and get, you know, go to the bathroom and just anything like that. She, she could not walk anymore. She had several vertebrae that would collapse in her spinal. I mean, it was, it was very painful, but I saw her accept that and change. And she had a marvelous impact on the lives of others her last two years of her life. I mean, it was amazing. Mm. Yeah. I think that's a that's a choice a person makes to to you know to do that rather than to just uh, give up and and, and just uh, drift away so to speak. And I think that's why George is, it becomes even more important that as Hal is doing and probably yourself and Chip <clears throat> that we become coaches, you know, on that yeah. sideline helping them to yeah. see that there is another way there is another life you know giving them making out making the voice known because there is this thing of giving up i want to give up because it's too painful but if we can help them to see that no there's still life you know that you can do a little something that's often what i usually tell people there's a small little thing that you can do that can make a big difference in somebody's life and so helping them to get to that place of seeing that little thing. And then they always say, Benita, I never even thought about that, you know, and then helping them to make, to bring that into, into life, to put breath in it. No, that's right. You know, uh, get, helping people find something they can do to really, yes. get, you know, I think, uh, <clears throat> uh, and maybe, maybe they've just quit thinking about what that might be. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, back to our culture, if our culture says the older you get, the more finished you are, it works against having a sense of yes. what is God doing in my life. Yes. I learned to accept my limitations, but I learned to grow through them in ways mm -hmm. I never realized before I embraced that mindset. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Yeah, that's why people like Corey Ten Boom and Dietrich Bonhoeffer w w did say their years in prison were the best years of their life mm -hmm. because they accepted the limitations of being in a jail cell and chose to use them for God and watched him work and it gave them purpose 
in the middle of the most of uh, you know one of the more horrible situations in life that none of us of course that's the situation of ukraine so uh, I pray for believers there. I pray for believers in the country surrounding them that as massive change and upheaval happens, the church will still be there and encourage people to look to Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, Chip, go back to our wheel, please. I'm getting there. Okay. There you go. So this is why I'm trying to picture this. You know, growth is at the middle of everything in life. And we're going to mm -hmm. use these other five essentials around, but really at the heart of every one of them, I think God wants us to keep growing. So it's the synergy of life that with which God created us. He created us, go back to Genesis 1, to be stewards of all of his creation, everything, relationships, the material world, you know, everything that we are, um, and give him glory by learning to accept.